I'm, I'm recording. So, uh, and if I, if I get off track, then it comes back. So, it, it helps me to really gauge and measure my lifestyle. You've got a big stick hanging over your head. So it's not all bad, right? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still learning stuff today. You were talking about sugar. Yes, sugar. Yeah. Tell us about sugar. I'm a sugar addict. I love sugar. Right. That's the first step. And I love talking about it. Good. <laughs> so the good news. We all do, in fact, have a sweet tooth. The bad news is we went down the wrong track with it. Law of human biology, your brain needs glucose. Boom, instant brain fuel. Carbs and fats are fuel. They're both fuel. They burn the exact same way, and we'll talk about why. But you need that instantaneous fuel often, if you're low blood sugar or when you wake up in the morning. And so, we got to keep our sweet tooth happy. How do we do that? With the elite sugar. What's the elite sugar? Fruit. 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 Exactly. exactly. And it's gotten away from us because sometimes we just don't have enough or, or the right kind. And then when we're at a dinner party and there's like Danishes and cupcakes and things of that nature can turn into a whole landslide of overdoing it. Because processed sugar doesn't really satisfy the sweet tooth. It can actually starve your body a bit. The reason being is it's extremely acid forming and the most alkaline forming things are, uh, well, are calcium reserves in your body. And so processed sugar can suck the life force out of you a bit. And then instinctively, your body is just starving for more. It can be mildly addictive. And by having regular elite sugar fruit, that's far less likely to happen. Good news. Good news. And so, preferably go with the elite sugar, which, is, which I consider to be berries. I mean, all sugar is great. Great, great fruit is awesome. But... Blueberries, cranberries, raspberries, strawberries, all of that stuff. Not only is it like a lower glycemic sugar, but it's just so nutrient rich. And that's the other part of what, I mean, that's the other thing that your body is starving for is just nutrients. Nutrients are, are really what satiate your appetite here. I know that some of you are going to be uh, a little hungry this week. But remember, it's, it's nutrients that are life force. That's what your body is hungering. All of those nutrients have a very special function that's making that possible. But back to sugar. Then you have uh, sort of medium glycemic sugars, like uh, apples, pears, watermelon. And then there are the high glycemic sugars, which are mainly tropical fruits, like bananas, papaya, mango, pineapple. Uh, what does glyce glycemic mean? It means uh, it's uh, that high glycemic fruits mean, boom, blood sugar goes up, and blood sugar goes down. It can be a bit rapid and a little imbalancing. Berries that are low glycemic, it's more sustaining. Blood sugar does this. Okay? And here is a key element to having that sugar really sustain your sweet tooth, is have fruit with protein fats, or food just soon after. But we all know the feeling of eating like a banana and you're hungry 10 minutes later. Because, boom, the sugar burns up like that. Instant brain fuel, but you need something to sustain it. And what sustains it is protein fat, like yogurt, nuts and seeds. That's why instinctively we love yogurt and fruit. Mm. Or nuts and honey or dried, dried fruit. and Peanut butter and banana. Nuts. Exactly. Banana splits. Butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll go a little beyond. Um, so that really helps. Mm -hmm. That really helps right there. That's what people don't know. Where's coconut on that? Coconut is, is, uh, is purely a fat. Good for cooking. It is. It is. Uh, coconut really does serve a purpose um, for cooking and in our diet. You need both uh, unsaturated fats, which are liquid oils, and then saturated fats would be, would be uh, coconut, butter, dairy products, uh, macadamia nuts. And that the reason saturated fats are so important, I know that we're, we're wary of saturated fats, and yes, it does require some degree of moderation because it's saturated fats that can raise our cholesterol, 
But the reason they're so important is they're actually a brain food. The brain is made of saturated fat, and the main thing that starves on a low-fat diet is this. That's why when we went to a low-fat diet, everybody got cranky. And fatter. Uh, fats are what really satiate your appetite. You know how you can eat a giant plate of pasta? And you might even feel full, but we're still craving something. It's why we eat ice cream. It's fats that really satiate. You can, that's why people can get by on a, on a low-carb, high-fat diet. It really works well for some people. And that in the end, if you have a higher-fat diet, and we want to go for the elite fats, and we'll talk about what that is, but if you have a higher-fat diet at the end of the day, you're probably going to have fewer calories. Compare a tablespoon of olive oil, like 100 calories of olive oil, versus 100 calories of crackers or bread. The, all, the 100 calories of olive oil is going to be way more satiating. And again, fat is fuel, just like carbs. They both burn the exact same thing. And that is kind of the secret doorway to this program, is your, the fuel that you're running on out there is this. It's, it's these reserves. This is just stored uh, energy. That's all it is. And it's, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Now, I'll tell you, the key, there is a key, and I know I'm jumping back and forth here, but I will come full circle to these points. Uh, the key for this to be energy is the green food in your diet. All the leafy greens, green drinks, kale, arugula, chard, spinach, blue-green algae, collard greens, basil, parsley, cilantro, all of those greens, yes. Is it, do you believe in like, juicing of it? Juicing is awesome. Okay. Like, you personally, you everything you need, or would you rather stick them in a butter mixer? I mean, personally, I like that protocol of just throwing the whole plant food into the blender and making, you know what, that is so genius because it's sort of an, it's, it's an alternative to eating salad all the time. Uh, like, my, my favorite recipe you're actually going to have tomorrow night where we just throw whole raw spinach into the blender with lemon juice and olive oil and it makes the most amazing green sauce. It makes it extremely palatable. I mean, it's like silky smooth and it tastes amazing. So you can put any raw leafy greens or essentially any, any vegetable in the blender. And I particularly like greens because it blends so smooth. And so you're making soups, sauces, pest, pestos, dips, dressings out of just throwing raw veggies in the blender. And it's so simple. Is there something that you're getting in the Vitamixer when you're, that you're, you're losing the producer? I don't think so. I mean, fiber. 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 Yeah. But you're still getting all the good stuff, the chlorella, the, the Oh, yeah. Lime, yeah, yeah. The, ad, the advantage... Drink it, drink it within a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Drink preferably. Yeah. Preferably. And also, I mean, now they have those new juicers that are like the slow... Or I don't know what they call them. Like the slow juicer is preserves the nutrients. It, well, it, what it's doing, the difference is it's actually squeezing the juice out. Those are champions. They're called champion juicers. Okay. Where... Uh, the cheaper ones are basically just grinding it up and then uh, filtering it to get the you know to remove the fiber. But in a way, uh, juicing juicing does have uh, its own advantage that uh, it's no work for the body to digest. When you eat food, this thing's working. It's working. When you eat, when you have, I'm sorry to go back, keep going back to this, but if you put it in the vitamin, that's not working, right? Because it's you drinking. It's pretty darn easy to digest. Now, it's uh, cellulose that makes living green things um, like have some form so that when out in nature, they just don't flop over in the dirt. And it, it takes some work for the body to break down. That's not bad. That's mm -hmm. definitely not a bad thing. But uh, I, I believe in, in giving your gastrointestinal system a, a break mm -hmm. from time to time. You know, you can just juice for a day or mm -hmm. eat. Uh, soups are brilliant for that because they become very soft, much easier to digest. It's good to do. You don't always have to have raw fruits and vegetables. I know there's the whole raw diet, and it seems to work for some people, mm -hmm. but typically just for a time. The body needs both. Uh, law of nature is the raw foods, raw fruits and vegetables, cool the body's temperature. Mm -hmm. And it's not because the food is cold. It just, it's, it's how it interacts with the spleen, which is one of your body's heaters. And the cooked foods uh, heat up the, the spleen. So it's a balance. That's why instinctively you like more cooked foods mm -hmm. in the winter and more raw fruits and vegetables in the summer. 
So what about like, uh, I went to a farmer's market yesterday and this woman was selling like these cookies that are gluten free, everything free. And she said it's like almond flour with honey mm -hmm. and blueberries. And yeah. so there was nothing, but then they're baked. But is that like healthy? I mean, the honey, how is honey as a sweetener? So that's that's the second part of sugar. I'm glad you brought that up. I probably would have remembered to come back. But <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have the elite sugar, which is fruit. And then we have our elite uh, processed sugars, which I wouldn't call honey a processed sugar. It's actually a whole food just right out of the hive. And honey is, is one of my top picks because it has uh, medicinal properties. It's stimulating for your immune system. Yes, it's concentrated sugar, so you don't want to just eat like six tablespoons, but uh, I'm a huge fan of it, especially with protein fat like yogurt because then it really sustains you. I mean, you can also just have like... A, a tablespoon or teaspoonful and then eat some food. You don't have to have it by itself or just with protein fat, but it's a medicinal food. Did you know uh, that Band-Aid is coming out with honey on them? Really? Yeah, my pediatrician told me that. Uh-huh. And a certain kind of honey that is mm -hmm. clover honey, maybe? Uh, raw. Any raw honey yeah, uh, kills, kind of kills bacteria <laughs> and fungus and things of that nature. That's why honey never goes bad. Right. Even if it's not refrigerated, it has like the lifetime warranty. Um, and uh, other processed sugars, uh, whole maple syrup, it's tree sap, just boiled tree sap. Agave? Agave, so then we have middle of the road processed sweeteners, which I would consider to be agave, uh, coconut sugar, um, sucanat, which is basically just the whole cane juice dried. And those definitely require some moderation and they don't have any nutritive value. I wouldn't say a, a little here and there, you know, some in your tea has any wear and tear on the body but it definitely requires some moderation. It can get away from you. And then we have uh, the, the ultra-processed sugar uh, that looks like cocaine, and that has wear and tear in the body. It really does. Now, is having a little raw, uh, is, I mean, excuse me, is having a little dark chocolate going to be bad for you because it has sugar in it? No, I don't think so. But you don't want to have, I mean, the, thing, the problem is it's, it's in everything. You know, uh, even at the natural food store, it's aisle after aisle of all of these breads, chips, crackers, cookies, even granola and all those natural organic cereals. If you look at the, at the ingredients, it's somewhere in there. Yeah. It's somewhere in there. And it's just the constant trickling, the constant trickling it's through the body. It's very hard to find like, stuff without I know. Sugar, like even granola. Yes, it really is. It doesn't really exist. Stevia. Stevia is cool. Now that's not sugar, it's a sugar substitute. And it's a natural herb. And it has a sweet flavor to it, but it's, it's virtually a calorie-free fuel. Now there are many different kinds of stevia products now where, uh, again, the super ultra-processed bleach stuff, I'm a little wary of that. Do you like the liquid? Uh, the, the liquid's okay. You can, actually, you can actually get a whole stevia leaf powder where, I mean, it's a, it's a leaf, so it's green powder. Uh, the minor flaws it has quite a unique flavor, which works with some things, not all things. Mm -hmm. But stevia is all right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. You know, for some people, I think it's 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 in a way necessary. You know, if you're a diabetic or if you have some gnarly case of candida, and it would be helpful for you to go sugar free for a while. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool. I think it's cool. Coffee. I mean, personally, I'm just a fan of smaller amounts of like elite sugar, like honey or maple syrup. Or coconut sugar is cool. So now it's tricky because stevia is now like uh, there are other companies trying to disguise their products as stevia, like Truvia. Truvia. Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. stevia. Yeah. Shame on them. They're not no, true at all. They're crooks. <laughs> Falsia. Yeah. Yes. Lysia. Yes. Now, now, definitely, I would say the worst are are actually. Uh, Artificial sweeteners. Yeah, like Those are the worst. Or... You're just, you're kind of, again, it's just a constant trickle and it's a lot of wear and tear on the liver. It really is. I mean, it's just toxic stuff and it's, it's, it's subtle poison. And fine, okay, once in a while, I don't care, but it's constantly drinking that stuff. And it is actually tested to be addictive, slightly addictive. I'm on that here. The worst thing on Tuesday is artificial yes, sweeteners. Yes, it is. <laughs> every time, every time somebody has a tough Tuesday, we're like, "Do you drink product?" You know? They're like, "Yeah, I do." And they probably don't go back. What about milk products? 
That's a really good thing to talk about. Uh, dairy has been in many diets all over the world for tens of thousands of years. And I think in, in most cases, the body is adapted very well to dairy. It's a good quality fat. I know that may raise some eyebrows. Remember, we need both unsaturated oils, and I want to talk more about those. But saturated fats, we need, again, it's a brain food. And the dairy, I think actually the best dairy product is butter. That's the best quality of dairy, and I know that people are really, they're always happy to hear that. Yes, ghee is, is uh, another name for ghee is clarified butter, and you have some of that in your soup tonight, and the only difference is uh, it's low boiled until the protein separates. There's a little bit of protein in butter, but both, I would say, are, are awesome foods. Totally awesome. cheese is awesome. It's okay. You know, cheese is cool. You don't eat too much cheese because it can kind of glue you up a little bit. Right. But it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Should I go towards goat milk cheese as opposed to cow milk? Well, for some people, you know, I mean, it's likely that their ancestral lineage just adapted better to goat products. But I think I think both are cool. I really do. Well, a little bit, a little bit, because uh, lactose is milk sugar, and it doesn't digest great. That's why I think butter is the best quality. You get protein from everything, yeah, but you can't just and calcium. <laughs> Bread. <laughs> and and uh, with with whole milk, well, first of all, if you have milk, whole milk only. Oh really? really? Why is everybody? Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Remember, it's fat that's the best quality to dairy. Nasty, 0% well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Many people like it. Well, I can drink. Milk. Because we've just gotten so used to it. I know. I understand. I it but here's what here's what happened. Here's what happened. Why is everybody becoming lactose sensitive? Right. Because we're just drinking lactose concentrate with our dairy. You know, and, and, and again... Uh, you mean with the skim milk, you mean? Or yeah, skim yeah. Milk and so here, here's the trick. The whole stuff and just less of it. Right. And you won't want as much because, remember, what satiates fat. your appetite? Fat. The fat. And it's a good quality fat for the brain, and it's just fuel. Okay. And essentially, fat is, at the end of the day, going to cure your appetite, so you're eating fewer calories overall. So dairy now, dairy products, because it's a saturated fat, do require some degree of moderation mm -hmm. because too much can raise your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. For this age bracket, with the level of activity that you're doing, is one to two tablespoons going to affect your cholesterol? Yeah. Probably not. And for, for young kids, I think it's, it's extremely important, not just for the calcium, but for this thing that's growing so fast. What about soy milk? I'm wary of it. Um, I mean, a little soy milk here and there is, is, is all right. You know, soy has been in many cultures too, especially yeah, Asian cultures, right. tofu and edamame. But they're well, getting a bad rep though now, right? Well, uh, yeah, GMS, GMS, not GMS. Well, okay, so but you do have organic. Right. You do I have organic do soy milk. And it's okay. It's okay. The, the problem with too many soy products for a lot of people is it imbalances your, your body's chemistry yeah. so that your body's producing yeah. more estrogen. Yeah. Putting your estrogen low, if you're like perimenopausal and your estrogen low, then soy would be good. In a way. But I'm no expert on that, so I can't really say too much you know, more You don't have a problem with, with um, like a cup of organic soy milk a day. I don't think so. Yeah. That's not going to hurt you. What about protein? Almond milk versus well, soy. I was going to say, once they take it's the almond milk protein. off, then you lose the property. It's more right? Soy right. A lot of yeah, now I'm, I am almond wary milk. of those of those nut milks like know. soy milk and hazelnut milk and, and some of these other milks because you make them. we need to talk about uh, nuts and seeds that they are very heat sensitive mm -hmm. when they're roasted mm -hmm. or like roasted almond butter, these uh, nut milks when they're pasteurized. Yeah. Uh, those unsaturated fats are very heat sensitive. They break down in a way they become they become rancid in a way. I mean, what's happening on on the molecular level is literally like atoms are breaking apart. It, I mean, it sounds it sounds terrible, and I mean it's it's not necessarily terrible, uh, but it's just that we're constantly getting roasted nuts and seeds and and rancid oils, and I want to talk about those too. And, and it basically irritates your thyroid. That's the compromise. And your, your thyroid is, is like a gauge for your body's metabolism. It sets off a whole ripple effect where um, especially too many fried foods um, really do jack your... They really can raise your weight. So, and we need, we need to talk more. You what? Just, you just are fascinating. I know. <laughs> so, wait, 
Okay, so that means like the, the, the natural peanut butter you buy in like an organic store is not good? It's raw. not great. It really isn't. And you can't get raw peanut butter because uh, yeah. it's a bit toxic because well, of yeah, fungus. Peanuts are not good, right? Peanuts are not good. Well, so I thought the almond butter is better if it's raw. Definitely. Raw, raw raw almond butter is so far superior. Yes. It's so far superior. Really not everybody likes good. it, but the key to making almond butter amazing is to mix some honey in it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Billy, you need to make that. Yeah. Raw almond butter and honey swirl. Market that sucker. And I just bought some oh, at the market. I wonder if it's good. It had walnuts <laughs> and flax in it. So I'm wondering. Right? Well, maybe I'll show you the it. jar I bought at this farmer's market. Yeah. You should tell me if it's good or not. Which yeah, I don't know. I'd have Do you to think look it would be at raw? it. Um, it would say. Okay. It would say, but raw almond butter, far superior. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing is that unsaturated fats, that would be the oils in nuts and seeds. And also oils like olive oil, canola, safflower, mm -hmm. soybean oil, corn oil, those are heat sensitive. Yeah. You heat them up and, and they break apart and produce those similar free radicals that irritate the thyroid. And so with unsaturated fats, it's really important that the majority of those need to be raw. The majority, it doesn't have to what be exclusively. You cook with when you're cooking? Saturated fats, that's one really useful thing about coconut oil. It's a saturated fat. Can you Butter. make eggs in oh, coconut oil? Yes, yeah, so anytime you do... Um, it's sort of middle of the road. red palm? Red palm, palm oil is a saturated fat. And it's okay. Um, canola? So, okay, hang on. So there, there are the saturated fats that are great to cook with. You know, they're heat stable. So anytime you do stir-frying, baking, sautéing, whatever... My, my top picks are, are uh, butter, or ghee, and coconut oil. And palm oil is okay. You know, it doesn't, where uh, I would say uh, butter and coconut have nutritive qualities. Uh, palm oil, not so much. It's just, it's a, cheaper, it's a cheaper food. Butter. Absolutely. Oh, it's the way to go. Ghee is really good. And you don't have to refrigerate it. And those are your body's what instincts saying, that ooh, that's good. Oh and, we, and we got a little off track because, again, back in the 90s, Everybody's like, God, all fat is bad. Here's what happened, is we discovered, whoa, you can do cheap oils for pennies, because, you know, b butter and coconut, those were, those were in our diet more back in the 80s, and those are expensive foods, and, and olive oil, that's, that's relatively expensive compared to corn, soybean, uh, canola, and safflower. And we discovered, wow, you can make these other oils for so cheap. And the way they're the way they're they're made, um, they're, they're pretty much rancid right, right away. And especially after they sit on a shelf for a while. So those being the majority of the oils in our diet is constantly trickling through our system, pickling our thyroid. It caught up with us. And the scare was that all fat was bad. And so again, when we went to a low fat diet. It got worse because uh, still the majority of the fats in our diet were the same oils. And so the whole thing to do is to just reintegrate the healthy fats, which is a moderate amount of good quality saturated fats that we discovered, and then the elite unsaturated fats, which, um, again, safflower, canola, soybean, and corn, I consider to be middle of the road. They're not great. A little bit okay. But the elite cold-pressed olive oil. Have it raw. Most of the time, I know the Italians cook with it and seem to get away okay. But for most people, cooking with olive oil is going to set off a chain reaction that isn't great. But it's 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 an awesome food. It really is. It really is. Raw cold cold pressed olive cold pressed olive oil is raw. Okay. You ain't going to get fat on on olive oil. Law of nature. Not going to happen. Really? It's a medicinal food. I think I think it, above all oils, it's it's by far the best. C cacao butter is okay. It's good. People are always happy to hear that. That's chocolate butter. So. So um, dairy is not acidic. Uh, no, it's sort of neutral. Oh, okay. Because the the um, the reason it would be acidic is because of the concentration of protein, and the uh, phosphorus and the calcium being one of the most alkaline forming minerals cancels that out. So it's pretty neutral. Okay. Yeah. But whole dairy and less of it. Yeah. Whole yogurt, Shelley less of it. Said about the mucus thing, like I know I get allergies and like when I have a lot of dairy I just feel really like kind of stuffy and under my eyes. It's really yeah. dark. Um, now that probably won't happen with butter. 
Okay. Especially D. I'm quite confident. Yeah. I mean, you know, try before you yeah, yeah. get into it all big time. <clears throat> and I, I'm now I'm going to go with the Huh? Yeah. Cranberries are very basic. It's a rad food. So what is rad? Rad. Cool. Awesome. Good. <laughs> rad is good. What is cranberries? Yes. Cranberries. Yes. Cranberries are very, it's one of the few things that are really on the basic side of the. Yeah. It's a medicinal food. I definitely rank it at, at the top. So what if you ate dried cranberries or something? Do you lose all the properties if they're like a little raisin and thing, like cranberries? Mm -hmm. Dry, dry cranberries? I mean, you know, there's always going to be some degree of compromise, but I wouldn't say it's substantial. I mean, I mean, you just eat cranberries? Or do you, you just buy cranberries? Just like raisins. Mm -hmm. Like dried ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're cool. They're cool. I'm a fan. I'm so a what fan. Kind of cranberries do you eat? I don't really eat too many cranberries. Yeah. I'm a very low sugar kind of guy. I, I even relative, I, I rarely eat berries. I have a little bit of honey and that's pretty much it. I mean, I'll eat, I'll eat some of these strawberries, strawberries and I'll have a smoothie from time to time. Hmm? Prunes. Prunes are awesome. They're, they're high in sugar, but they, in a way, have their medicinal value for the gastrointestinal system. That's part of why they're in the diet here on trail. Great food. Totally great food. Everything moving. Mm -hmm. They really do. It just makes things slippery, basically. Helps things. Natural oxygen. Yeah. So. Now they're coming out with prune juice. Sure. We eat a lot of dates back home where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a high, high sugar, sugar food, but yeah. it's rad. I'm a fan of dried fruit for sure. All dried fruit? Well, you need to be uh, selective. The, I'm, I'm extremely particular about dry fruit when it comes to organic. Okay, right. Because they add sulfur and other preservatives right. so, to the majority the of... dried fruits if they're organic? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I'd be a fan of prunes and, and, and cranberries. So the apricots. Uh, I'm a huge fan of golden berries. I think those are amazing, actually. Those are one of the berries that I eat a lot of. It, it, they're, golden they're, berries? They're, yeah, they're an Incan food. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta hunt around the natural food store for those, or maybe order them online. I'm, I'm a fan of goji berries. Oh, goji, goji berries! Oh, yeah, I, I put them in my golden. Yeah. I put them yeah. in my salad. So it's one of the lower sugar berries. Yeah. Good for your eyeballs. Really? Fantastic. Fantastic for your eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Eyeballs. Yeah. 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 Everyone's in every one of my salads right now. What are they? Do they help? Like, if you have, for example, in my family is macular degeneration, and that's one of the things that you're supposed to. And they have dark chocolate covered ones too. They do, they're Ooh. really good. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a really good way to get some chocolate yeah. stuff. Dark, dark chocolate coated goji berries. Yeah. Okay. So I'm so apricots, no mango, dried mangoes. They're all cool. High they're high high all high cool in moderation, but those right. those are mangoes are really high. high. Yeah, okay, so now remember. The rem remember, the, the way to, to have it with a degree of moderation, again, protein with fats, because it's, fat. it's, so here's the way it works, is remember it's the fats that satiate mm -hmm. to curb your appetite to overdoing the sweetener. Right. And then it's, it's more of a meal that sustains you. Boom, you're getting the instant glucose because your brain needs it. Sweet tooth is satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then protein fat is like a slow-burning fuel that will sustain. Mm -hmm. so, I'm with nuts, so if you have, I'm a huge fan of smoothies in the morning. Yeah. Add, fine, throw a banana in there, but make sure you get a, a good amount of a big heaping tablespoon of yogurt, a big heaping tablespoon of, of raw almond butter. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking, put your greens in there, and this has become like a well-rounded, nutritive meal. Mm -hmm. And the body likes smoothies in the morning because it's liquid, it's extremely easy to digest, where your, digest, your digestion is just kind of getting wrapped up for the day. Mm -hmm. So that's my first meal. Mm -hmm. I down a bunch of water. I do like a hot cup of tea. The body instinctively likes hot things in the morning. And then I have a big smoothie. That's like a breakfast. Do you like Greek yogurt? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've had a tough time finding certified organic Greek yogurt. So I've, I've, just, I've just found this brand that I really like. I don't know. I can't remember what the name is, but it's, it's a certified organic whole yogurt. And it's in a glass jar, which I like. I like to get... Uh, as many like liquid products or, or yogurt like products in a glass container. Yeah. 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 It's just a better product. I'm I am 
especially particular about uh, just eating primarily organic. I don't think you need to be hardcore about it. We're talking just about the majority of our lifestyle. If and when you're out and about with friends, I think you can be too hardcore, and it's just kind of wear and tear on your peace of mind in a way. I mean, is a little bit of genetically modified food or processed sugar going to hurt from time to time? I don't think so. You know, especially when Anything when this already, thing is... No, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very particular about that. You have bread in your diet. The, the Germans were brilliant. Get German rye. It's just 100% rye bread. That's all it is. And it's an outstanding grain. <laughs> So the key to make, the key to, uh, rye bread, well, okay, like, normal rye bread in the bread section is just rye-flavored bread. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, the German rye bread is like, feels like a brick. Yeah. It's really heavy. And so the way to make it great is to toast it and then mm. put some butter and or honey on or it. Or avocado, like, just mm. on top. Yes. That's like that Baltic stuff that really yes. super dense. So. Yes. Is it that, like, dark yeah. bread? Yeah. You sound like yeah. pumpernickel. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, pumpernickel is rye bread. Yeah, manza it's rye bread. bread. Manza bread? Is that what it's called? Manza bread? Uh, manna bread. Manna bread. Manna bread. And so cool. it's really nice. Uh, manna so bread is, it's, it's basically just unleavened bread, and you can yeah, get it nice. uh, in the natural food store, and you can get it with, uh, you know, it's wheat or, or pure rye. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of, of the wheat manna bread is that it's, it's the whole wheat berry, not to, it hasn't been ground into a flour. And and I've I've pretty much cut wheat products out of my diet with the exception with the exception of like products similar to that. But I, I don't really do too much pasta or, or really bread of any kind. I, I don't do well with most grains. You know, you, you I mean I love quinoa, but I I I really don't do grains. Do you do wheat quinoa? Mm, I mean I'll have it. Why don't you do I don't really do grains. My body, my body likes to run on just massive amounts of plant foods and, and fats. I do eat a massive amount of butter. You do. And raw nuts and seeds. Okay. And your cholesterol is fine. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do For you younger people body? who are extremely active, yeah. not a problem. Yeah, I'll tell you, thing, the right? problem, the problem with our cholesterol has been the low-grade fats, fried sure. food, fried food, and sugar. Mm -hmm. But fried food is the worst. And then, uh, you know, ground beef products and sausage and bacon. Animal lard, I'm glad we thought of that. Animal lard is, is a different kind of fat altogether. It's a saturated fat, and I know some people seem to be able to get away with it all their life, but too many ground, ground beef products ain't well, we great. We feed our kids a lot. Like, I know my kids would, like, have spaghetti bolognese, lasagna. Yes. So what should I substitute? Kids instinctively love fatty animal products, hamburgers, sausage, and yeah. bacon, again, because they, they need it for this. Mm -hmm. So, and, and really, is that going to raise their cholesterol now? Yeah, but it's okay. okay. Just get organic. Yeah, but, yeah, like but if, you, if, you, uh, yeah. if you have animal protein, go with the elite, the leaner stuff. Is a hamburger going to hurt you once in a while? No. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the time, lean. Tenderly. If you Spicy. have it. Save it for the end of the day, too. Meat is restorative. When is your body doing its restoration? When you're sleeping. It isn't fuel. In fact, animal protein is one of the harder to digest foods. So this thing is working hard, and it can actually make you tired. Most people, not all people, but most people are tired after eating meat. That's why when you're like under a high stress situation, you <laughs> people instinctively eat a big, you know, steak and potato meal. I got poultry. Well, it's all right. You know, it's been it's it's also been the diet all over the world for many years. Um, it's not a very nutritive food, but it's it's the advantage is it's a relatively inexpensive protein, and it's okay. A small amount of chicken is okay. Uh, like dairy. A high quality steak for the chicken. Um, because of the nutrients. Yeah, I mean, truthfully. I used, I, I used to be able to build more muscle mass. And now I've worked really hard to figure out how to do that on a vegetarian diet. So I'm getting nearly as much protein. I've been able to sustain my weight even though I eat virtually no grains. But, uh, and the advantage, the big advantage is I just have more energy. Again. So are you in a constant state of ketosis or what's going on there? Uh, I used to be. Not everybody knows what that is. Ketosis is when you are eating like a pure fat diet, just pure mm -hmm. fat and protein. And, uh, and then and the advantage of that for me was 
uh, when your brain is running on ketones, for whatever reason, it has an anti-seizure property. Oh, so, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's interesting because it's not good for your heart to be in ketosis for a long time. Right, exactly. It caught up with me. Yeah. And I was just basically eating a massive amount of animal products. And my body yeah. was like, no more, yeah, no stop. More. So then I sort of evened out, and then I, 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 as I was eating less and less meat, I felt the advantage to be that I just had more energy and vitality. It was hard to do long ago because in most regions, you have seasons, and when, like in the winter, you just kind of have meat, potatoes, and sauerkraut that you pickled from the season before. And then in the summer, of course, then you were able to get your vitality back, but... It was just really all that was available, and now we're so lucky in this day and age because you can get virtually any plant food from all around the world. And I think it is also helpful to eat with the seasons and, again, not have so many raw fruits and vegetables that are imported from Mexico and the tropics. But I think it's an, it's an advantage. It's definitely an advantage, especially green foods. Green foods are the most important thing to put in your body. Well, that's what I was hearing you said. You can eat an avocado every day. It won't make you fat. Not at all. So I started doing it. I probably eat one or two avocados every day. Genius. Well, How's it. it working? Fine. I love and it. And it is it's what you're saying. I, it fills me up. I just I'm, a little glad you could be the, I'm glad you could be the testament. Yeah. yeah. Really? Unsaturated fats ain't going to make you fat. Law of nature and saturated fats, the good quality ones. We're not talking animal lard, of course. We're talking uh, butter and coconut oil and, and cacao butter. Those ain't going to make you fat either. It's going to have the opposite effect. I'm totally confident. So, yeah. Again, it's fuel. And again, it's how you can do that. Because you got the fuel. Now, here's the back door. Here's what makes it possible. Because many people do an exorbitant amount of exercise. And they seem to have these stubborn uh, pockets of fat on their body. And they're like, God, you know, I'm on a relatively low-calorie diet. And I eat my fruit and vegetables. I just said green foods are the most important. And here's why they're so important for weight loss is because it's the most detoxifying food. Chlorophyll is what makes all living green things green. And it has a negative charge where it literally bonds the toxins in the body. That would be metabolic waste that's accumulated from too many processed foods, not drinking the best air, uh, uh, heavy metals, not the best water quality. That stuff accumulates in the body over time. It's wear and tear especially on these sensitive things. And your body's self-defense is for, uh, your body's self-defense is fat cells. Fat cells become engorged with toxins. Your fat cells are sucking up toxins to protect these sensitive things. It's how your body protects itself, like I've been saying. And the, that's why your body's reluctant to burn fat is because it would just be dumping those toxins back into your bloodstream. Your body won't do it. So massive amounts of green foods. You're sucking that funk out. And also we know uh, green foods would be the most nutritive. Pulling the funk out, putting the restorative in. That's the whole big lifestyle diet protocol we just need to constantly remember. And not only are you uh, pulling the toxins out to be able to burn this as fuel, um, it's... uh, Again, it's taking that toxic burden off of all these sensitive things. It it creates a bit of an unlocking of energy, if you will. So even though they're not caloric foods, they're the most energizing. They really are. There was a doctor of obesity on board, and I don't remember her, but Matthew and I were hiking with her, and we we were talking about how do you get, you know, 300 pounds off someone. And and she said, you've got to keep the fat dragon asleep. And the way you awaken it, um, is by eating some kind of carbohydrate or some kind of sugar. Or, mm-hmm. you know, if you juice, if you take some orange juice and you go to the gym, um, your body is going to just burn sugars. Mm-hmm. And uh, anything available other than that, mm-hmm. if you infuse it with carbohydrate because it's about the insulin spikes. So if you're if you're in the midst of work, if that is, first of all, do you... You concur. I totally agree with that theory. Low sugar, low carb, high quality fat, massive amounts of green food, and massive amounts of water, and hiking. That's the most effective weight loss protocol there is. So if you if if you if you're in the midst of, like on the hike today, where you've been fruit, does that stop the fat burning process? No, because I mean, remember, we're not giving you like a whole apple or banana. I mean, a prune. Perfect, because you need that glucose. 
It's right. just it's just a little spurt of energy to keep sustaining. Fruit, not vegetables. You mean like carrots? When we're hiking. Do you get yeah. carrots? No, we get oh. we get apple apples and watermelons. Yeah. Uh, and watermelon today. It's okay. No, banana's okay. I know it's a high sugar fruit, but when you're doing an exorbitant amount of exercise, it's cool. Yeah, right. I mean, I wouldn't recommend eating like a couple bananas, but uh, I, I'm a big fan of just having either a little bit or using it as a sweetener. It's a healthy sweetener. I think that's a good question. They should be offering vegetables at this now, probably. They used to. Or they yeah. used to. But I mean, yeah. it's good. But I think some people are getting nauseous. nauseous. Yeah. See, fruit, fruit is just the easiest to digest fuel because when you're doing a lot of exercise, you don't have an appetite. You really don't. Most people don't. Right. You know, most people don't want to like eat a big meal and then go hike right away. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to just digest your food because your body is working to digest this. So you, you instinctively you want to rest your your everything else so that this can do its job. Where a fruit is so easy to digest, it's the most easy to digest food, so it just helps to sustain, to keep, help you keep going. So if you work out in the morning, what's the best and, thing that you can do? And you're, you're, you're hiking with this fuel, but your brain is running off of that glucose that we keep giving you. you know, that, <laughs> go ahead. No, if you're, so just in everyday life, I mean, if, you're, if you're headed out to the gym, after you wake up and you've had breakfast, what's the optimal thing that you could have? To go to the gym? Yeah. A smoothie. Yeah. Liquid, easy to digest. You're getting some protein fats to sustain you. I mean, I'd like to give it a half hour if you're literally going to grab something and go. I mean, maybe just a piece of fruit. But, I mean, I want to have something a little more substantial than that. And a smoothie just digests so easily. Again, it's, it's a meal. It's just boom. So in your smoothie, you're not putting any, you're just putting, what's your liquid? Water. Ice? You put water in it. Water yeah. with yogurt. Uh -huh. Water, water, yogurt, a sweet, a good, healthy, natural sweetener, like, like banana. Like or but almond milk only has 35 calories. Yeah, so that's what I put in mine, almond milk. Yeah, yeah my, my, my choice creamer, though, is, is yogurt. Or, uh, you know, actually, raw almond butter, you wouldn't think, but... When you blend it with banana and water, it does make an ice cream or somehow. It does just uh, banana and, and ramen butter go very well together. Or I'll just do a handful of strawberries sometimes, no banana. Why almond butter and not peanut butter? Well, peanut butter is, is a... Is a <laughs> that's okay. It's um, okay. So the, the disadvantage is it's roasted, and those oils are heat sensitive, and they're a bit rancid. Peanut butter, you could call a little bit of a fattening food in a way, just because of the quality of oil. And also, it's high in tryptophan, so it's not an energizing food. A lot of, a lot of peanut, peanut butter makes you sleepy. Aren't they acidic? Well, most nuts and seeds are. And that's, that's okay. You need some, you need some acid-forming foods. It's a balance, balance. Like, if you're just eating raw fruits and vegetables all day, you're by, I mean, becoming super alkaline isn't bad for you, but becoming al like super alkaline just makes you spacey. Or you need just some more grounding from uh, cooked foods, too, and, and uh, you know, other... So it's the rancid thing that's why raw nuts are so much better than yes. roasted nuts? Yes. Okay. Or Billy's special delicious salty dry freeze nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah. sprouted. They're so sprouted. Sprouted. Yeah. They're sprouted. They're so delicious. Yes. We've been talking about before you do your workout. In my world, they talk a lot about getting protein within 20 minutes. After. 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 Yes. I really believe in that. Mm -hmm. And I also believe uh, smoothies can, can be the ticket because right after you work out, most of the time people don't really have an appetite. But, uh, like, a good workout is wear and tear mm -hmm. on your muscles, which is a good thing. Because then your body's like, whoa, this person's living like the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, trekking miles and miles. We better build a, a sturdier version. And, and, and uh, basically, protein, that's the, that's the substance. That's the tool right there. And so protein soon after, great. And I like protein powder because, I mean, it doesn't take any digesting, really. It's easy to digest. Boom. Do you put that yeah. in your smoothies, protein powder? Yeah. There's some in your green drink. Are you talking about soy or whey? I'm not a fan of soy and whey. 
um, soy imbalancing for your body's chemistry and, and whey, uh, dairy protein is okay, like in the whole form. But too much too much dairy protein, it's like animal protein, it's, it just makes you tired. So it's like white protein? Digest. No, you know, um, uh, so not to brag or anything, but you guys take my protein here. It's a, it's a sprouted brown rice, basically. It's a okay. sprouted brown That's rice. Yeah. How much protein is in that? And you're a little shot, probably yeah. six or seven grams. How yeah, you just a small. How much protein? In a smoothie, though, what, what do you think about pea protein? It's cool. Yeah, it's I've tried pea protein. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Which one? It's Which one? Pea protein. Because it's the dried piece, it's organic, but yeah. it's also, it's a little sweet, and it's got a lot of protein. Sure, sure, that's cool. Right. I'm down with it. Yeah. I can roll with pea protein. Can roll with pea protein? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you choose brown rice? It's just so easy to digest, and it's more of a protein concentrate, so it's pure protein. I mean, it's basically, it's 18 grams of protein and, like, less so than like 100 you calories. A typical scoop, what size? Uh, a heaping tablespoon is 18 grams. Of brown so, rice? Yeah. And I, I just I just shake it up in a water bottle and have it right after a workout. And that's brown it. Brown rice or the protein? Uh, well, it's, it's a it's a sprouted brown rice protein. Oh, that's so what it you is. have that. You yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Oh, right. uh -huh, it's it's made from sprouted okay. brown rice. It's made from the fiber husk that surrounds the rice grain. Something negative came out about brown rice recently. Really? I don't know. Did you hear it? I don't know. No. Someone was telling me about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, no one heard it. Someone was telling yeah, me. Yeah, I had something. Yeah, did you hear it? Yeah, but there was something about brown rice in particular that came out that was has oh. something that's not good for. It's probably the white 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 rice producers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Stuff here because I don't answer. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. Why is it so good for you to eat protein after you work out? Don't you just said that. Well. <laughs> Doctor? You want to get the amino acids in your bloodstream so that the muscle fibers can be rebuilt. Right. What, what don't you like about whey protein? Wheat. Uh, wheat protein. No, whey. Whey. Whey, whey is wheat. No, excuse me. Okay, because there is, there is a wheat protein too. Uh, Wait, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes you tired. Yeah, lots of animal protein. Dairy it just does. Well, it's it's just a harder to digest dairy. Again, that's that's why instinctively, most of the time, the body is most attracted to to the fat part, like butter and cheese. And and then you sort of most most adults you just kind of lose interest in milk. Do you know that? Do you know that feeling? Do you feel it all at all? Yeah, I don't. You start to lose in. You start to lose. You know. Okay, not everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean whey protein is fine. It's okay. I mean most of the uh, well, the, the muscle stores. Yeah. So a lot of protein and the choice is whey protein or soy protein. Right. That's the majority right there. The green pea thing is coming a little bit in vogue now. You can start to see that more. But the muscle, I mean, the, the muscle builders, the strength people. Bodybuilders. Yeah, the bodybuilders, and that's that's what they go. That's right. They, they but it's also expensive. Right, it's a lot less expensive. Yeah. I used to take it. I don't think it's bad for you. You choose way or I, way I mean, I'm just all about plant food now. You know, I get, like, my dairies. Butter and that's pretty much butter it. Butter and butter. Yeah. And more butter. So, exactly. Okay, when you say you eat a lot of butter, I know. how much butter do you eat? This couple butter? sticks a day. You do what? Seriously? No. <laughs> I was gonna say, holy crap, that is a lot of butter. Oh no, I mean you know maybe three tablespoons. Oh, so you yeah. put it on your vegetables and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And I melt it in soups. I'll okay. tell you, I I eat a ton of soup and that is the secret if, if people just had to eat vegetable soup all the time that would be such a bummer mm. and the trick to making soup is amazing is just yeah, lots of butter that's so, the, that's wait, so the, we'll get the recipe for the soup too. yeah yeah oh, that's, that's, that's the ticket oh, it doesn't have as much as I would like I, I would uh, I would put more if I you could melt make it. it in the bottom of the pan and then add the soup no you just make the soup and then throw it in there and it melts really? yeah but butter in any soup just takes it so far beyond what it would be otherwise.
Uh, yeah, but I'll try it. Yeah, trust me. Because it's so. Here's our tip for the week. It's, 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 it satiates your appetite, but it just makes it taste so different. Mm. It adds a whole new level of just flavor. Soup is the easiest thing to make. Uh, it's a huge pot of soup that Rosemary makes, probably two gallons, and it's probably the easiest thing to make here, where all you do is chop up a whole bunch of veggies, your favorite veggies, which, for example, mine would be uh, sweet potato, broccoli, and kale. So I'll just chop it up so it's all about that size. Throw it in the pot, uh, fill it up with water so uh, vegetables aren't floating around. The water just comes up to, the, to you know, the very top vegetables. Low boil it for about 15 minutes, and then you just scoop about a quarter of the pot out into the blender. That's a key step. Right. Scoop about a quarter out into the blender, blend it till it's silky smooth, pour it back in. Now you have a really rich, hearty base. And then I love Indian curry powder in there, and then uh, for like a gallon of soup, I'll throw a whole stick of butter in there. It is so amazing. It is so amazing. And then I just eat it all week. It takes me 30 minutes to make the pot, and then every day I just scoop a couple cups so out and heat it up. Do you boil the vegetables? Just boil them. Yeah. Do you, and then do you for... miss all the vitamins when you boil them? Oh, yeah, you do. But it you just do. tastes good sometimes. Okay, I'm glad you said that. No, 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 because you're, you're definitely <laughs> losing the antioxidants and some of the heat-sensitive uh, nutrients, but the minerals, they actually can become more available because the, the, the foods, uh, the minerals are still in there. They don't ever go away. And because the foods have become soft, they're, they're more easily digested. And so that, and, and here's the trick, is have some raw greens with your soup. And, and so not everybody wants to have salad all the time. I mean, personally, I get totally, I truthfully, I have not had a salad in weeks. I just totally lose interest. I overdo it for a while. I'm like, I don't want any more salad. You know, where you have to add olive oil or salad dressing of whatever kind, which we should talk about salad dressing. But, and then you got to chop up vegetables. Here's the ticket. Just grab a massive handful of greens and just eat the stuff. Rosemary sees me do that, and she's like, oh, God. You know, because I always kind of goof off and just, like, totally fill my mouth. But um, I, I really just, I believe in that. Like I'll I'll grab just a big take hand. A head of lettuce and chew on it. Don't yeah, or my like my picks would be uh, arugula, or arugula or chale kale. or kale. Yeah. yeah, and I don't love the taste, but I don't mind it. You know, I kind of enjoy it actually. It's just like crunch, crunch. So I'll just eat that, and then I have my soup, or do the, do the two together, and have my soup. I'll, I'll uh, put some tempeh in there, or, or goat cheese. So, yeah, it's pretty good. You'll have some tonight. It's not quite my version. Zucchini with the acid, yep. yeah. acid sauce. Can <laughs> you give me an example of what you eat on any regular, on any given day? A normal day. Like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like what? Like I wake up. I have my hot Indian chai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. That I make from scratch. Oh yeah. I, but I use half and half because okay. the fatty part of the dairy is is what I'm most interested in. Mm -hmm. And then I have my smoothie. Which, again, it's, it's like this small, well-rounded meal. It has the natural sugar. It has the protein fats. It has my greens. It has the nutritive value. And, and I'm a believer in smaller, more frequent meals. If, if you have a giant meal, that's some work for your body to break it down, to convert it into fuel. And a big meal can make you tired. And so after a smoothie, I'm a huge fan of eggs. I eat a lot of eggs, actually. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I, I think eggs are a superfood. I'm so glad you say that. That's yes. And the yolks do not raise your cholesterol yeah, at all. That's, that's old news. No. The yolk is the life force. That's the nutritive part of the food that gives you energy. Yes, the white, the albumin is protein, but the yolk is the best part. And so remember, it's saturated fats that raise your cholesterol. So... Uh, there's less than one gram of saturated fat in, in an egg. That ain't nothing. That's no. nothing. So that's your whole breakfast? The chai, the um, smoothie? Well, um, so, but they're a few hours apart. Because okay. there's, there's smaller, more frequent breakfast. Mm -hmm. there's, there's smaller, more frequent meals. It's more sustaining. I'm definitely not talking about snacking. Okay. Snacking is an ideal because you need the meal and then give your digestion a break right. to break to to break it down and digest it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's seven o'clock in the morning. You have your child. I pound a bunch of water first because your body is a little dehydrated when you wake up in the morning, and then yeah, I have my hot drink, I ha and I put a massive amount of ginger in there. It heats the body up, but I make it genuine, authentic style. I put some black tea in there. I I sweeten it with coconut sugar, cinnamon. 
Cinnamon and ginger have medicinal value. So, and I used to make it when I worked here, and, and I would take it up to the yoga den with you guys. I'm sorry, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, that's good. And, and then lunch and dinner, you have one. So, 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 so you have your... Oh, that, that's at 8 o'clock in the morning, and yeah. then at 10 o'clock you have your smoothie? I have my smoothie, and it's a like meal. 10? And then like 11, a few hours later, I have my eggs. I eat a lot of eggs. I eat five eggs, cooked in two tablespoons of butter, and then I have two pieces of the whole rye bread where it's 100% rye. And then I have uh, my, my middle of the day food. Uh, I might have one of my bars and, and I'll have a, a massive See, amount of greens. I was talking about the bars. That's what I wanted to meet you. Oh. I don't I meet the gardener. I mean, I like the gardener, oh. but I want to talk about your bars. Okay. Oh. I'm not allowed to brag about those. Okay. So, but I might have a bar and then I'll eat a massive amount of greens and then I'll eat some goat cheese, a, a big handful of sprouted almonds, maybe a little piece of chocolate, uh, some golden berries. It's kind of just like a... It's like a snack meal where I'm just kind of eating a bunch you of... You ever get out of the kitchen? Yeah, I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah. To do all this, you got to be yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah. No, but I got, I got it pretty simplified and dialed, actually. I mean, I, because I'm a single dude, and it's kind of lonely just working in the kitchen all the time, like, uh, and, and often, I mean, it takes me literally three minutes to make a smoothie. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I just got my recipe dialed. I do the exact same thing every day. And then eggs, boom. I'm so quick at it and, and then remember uh, for lunch I'm not even really making anything I'm Does just throwing it how you cook the eggs? I'm a, I'm a fan of, of fried butter because I don't know they shouldn't call it fried but then the yolk is is only warm because that's the nutritive part of the food and I like to have it, I like to have it semi raw do you think that's a healthiest one? I think so scrambled's cool it's totally cool it's not it's hard boiled it's okay that's fast food. I mean, they, well, I mean, they're all good. They're all good. I mean, we're just talking about the best of the best. But you need the yolk. I mean, it seems I remember you said you need the yolk in order to properly digest the whites. So to say, I don't know. Too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not totally sure. Okay. Yeah. So that so I have like kind of my snack lunch. Remember, I mean, it might not sound like a substantial meal to you, and it's not. I'm doing smaller, more eggs, frequent I meals. Know. Right, so right. So I, and then I might have an apple with almond butter. It's good to have your, your the leaf mm. sugar a couple times a day, morning and afternoon. You got to keep it happy. So then in the evening, when... Go ahead and just for the time being, when you get home, clean out your pantry from any processed sugar food. Just I want you to do this as like a one-month trial period. And after you leave here, it's the best time to do it because you hit the reset button in your body. But you got to just get it out of sight, out of mind. Throw all, all your cookies, chips, crackers, whatever that has granola, cereal, all that stuff that even has a little bit of cane sugar in there. Just get rid of it. And then just have... Your elite sugar, either fruit or honey, a couple times a day, or or uh, a great bedtime snack, um, yogurt and honey. It's a you great. Doing a lot of hiking during your day. I do. A, I do it a lot of exercise. A lot of exercise. I do. I do, but I didn't for a few years because of my health situation, and I basically ate this exact same diet, and I still had a hard time keeping weight on. That you were supposed to eat. I know. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't really do anything load bearing because I didn't have enough circulation to my arms. So, yeah. so what about your immune boosting powder that you make? Um, it's a, it's just vitamin C fruit extracts. Have you heard of camu camu, acerola berry, amla berry? So they're just berries that have been you know where the sugar has been extracted and it's ground into a powder and then you can just mix it in and shake it up in your water bottle. Can I take it's some? It's there for you. Buy some from you. No, we make you forget forget about your checkbook here. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, really. <laughs> well, maybe he'll give it to you. Um, I mean, if it's international. No, because I live overseas, so yeah, I'm just thinking that because I was. Yeah, then we do we do make exceptions for really? that. Really? Okay. Because I've been looking kind of, for. It's ashram rules. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. No, but that's okay. You know, because I've really yeah. been looking so you can for a buy good. It buy it on Amazon. It, it'll, 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 it'll be here by. Uh, by well, next month. Well, <laughs> no, month. we can we can make an exception for international. Okay. I shouldn't I just, say that in front of everybody. Oh, okay. But, sorry. But you're asking. So. I just right. uh, I've been looking for a really good kind of a vitamin C sort yeah. of immune, and I find that some of them are just like so. Well, you so know, like the ones here's in the here's the thing. So. I mean, I'm not I, I'm not just bashing other products, but. Um, it's all, what is it made of? Yeah. And the majority of vitamin C products, if you look at the back, it's ascorbic acid. Chemical, Ascorbic yeah. acid doesn't come from food. Yeah. 
It's like it's like a multivitamin. That stuff doesn't come from food. I don't think it's good. If you're in a pinch, fine. Take take the emergency. Take take the the vitamin C. It's just but it's just a part of vitamin C that we have made from basically an isolated GMO corn protein. And it's uh, it's it's better than nothing again if you're under the weather, but it's not good to take on a regular basis. This is the thing. Because then it's constantly trickling through yeah. your system and it can actually accumulate in your liver and in your kidneys. Why are people getting kidney stones? Too many of these cheap multivitamins. Again, those multivitamins don't come from food. They come from mines. Yeah. And... <laughs> Well, what is the one piece of nutritive advice doctors give you is take the multivitamin and the catch it. Multivitamins come from pharmaceutical companies. And like, there are the people that really really buy any of those. Even the good ones like the Whole Foods. Like yes. Still give yes. Them, still, really. That whole industry, I, I am... Totally scam. Uh, yes. Yes, I am totally confident. What Google it. Google it. I, I, I don't want to like bring up a, 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 an ugly yeah. subject here. Huh. Look at but, the life of spirit. Delivery system for vitamins. Ooh, I don't know. It's like it, it's. I, I'm, I don't know. I can't I say. I can't speak to the medical. They have it at Vitamin Farm, and it's just like it's, they say it's the new black in in making sure that you get maximum impact of vitamins because it passes. It's surrounded in these little globules, and it passes through the stomach acids, and it releases huh. in your intestines. Interesting. So I mean, the the bottom line for for deciding is just. What did it come from? Did it come from food? Right. Yes. So that's that's the one question. Did it happen? My actually internist doesn't. He's not a big believer in vitamins. Uh huh. Okay. No wait. Now, if you have some particular ailment, taking right. a but taking, a multivitamin. He right. Says, he says it's that's good. ridiculous. Multivitamins are ridiculous. Well, that's right? what he thinks. Too. Exactly. So it's a complete and, waste of money. <laughs> and toxic, and to get to get that many milligrams of each of those. Uh, nutrients that they're calling nutrients that they that they claim to be in there. You would have to eat a table food of raw organic fruits and vegetables. It's ridiculous. You don't need all those vitamins and minerals every day. You really don't. You have. Here's the thing. You don't have to stick to like the same thing every day. You would get bored. It's okay. Many cultures have adapted to that, and so some people do really well with like this constant routine. I do okay with it, but. Here's what I want you to know, is you actually have way more flexibility in your diet and lifestyle than people think. You can eat different portions and different amounts of things, different, different proportions of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, days and weeks and months. You're allowed lots of variety. You really are. So, yeah, there's more flexibility. How late do they do have, have one or two meals? Okay, so... I then have like a relatively early dinner, like six or seven, and I do my soups. I'm a huge fan, and to not get bored of it, I just use different herbs and spices, different veggies, and I'm telling you, man, with butter, you just never get tired of it. It's the magical substance. So, and then, and then my late night, my late night sort of meal snack is raw, uh, my almonds and honey and yogurt. That's kind of like a late night snack. To sort of keep me happy, so I'm not hungry in the middle of the night. Can I ask you about the exercise bars? Which one do you suggest, if any? You know, you don't have time. You don't have time to do a smoothie and all that. So, like, which one do you get? That's uh, the green one you had today. It was so good. Yeah, which one was that? With the little on and off. What was it? It's his bar. Which one? No, I get that in Miami. Yes, you can get it on Amazon. Be here tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It comes with a really nice note at the box. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't yeah. Know yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's your question? Well, what was the best bar? Obviously, it was yours. I mean, I don't want to brag, but I believe yeah. so. <laughs> right. um, but, okay, so it's, it's all just what's it made of. That's, that's, that's the one question. Uh, so be, a, be an ingredient reader and... I want to see the first ingredients be uh, raw almond butter, honey, black seeds, foods of that nature where uh, a lot of the bars, the natural bars, are like soy protein isolate, and, there, and there's a long list of ingredients, and they'll have sugar somewhere in there. And so again, it's just all what it's made of. I don't, I don't really care about the proportion of calories so much. It's just going to be real food. Yeah, that's it, real food. Just elite foods. But if she 
she doesn't happen to have one in your bar. So yeah, one. exactly. Um, one brand, one particular brand, I don't know. You just got to look around. You know, I'm all about the organic bars and just seeing what the ingredients are. I see some of you are, I see folks are trickling out. We've covered a lot of good info. So if anybody wants to hang out more, we can do a little more Q&A, but uh, those have been great. That was fascinating. Yeah. That is a question. I mean, how much can you choose? Just wondering if you, if you get it in an organic bar or organic bar, and the question is, what are the ingredients? Can you trust the name from Canada? I don't. I think so because the USDA are—they're pretty hardcore. I mean, they'll hunt you down if you put a USDA organic stamp on your product, and it ain't—it ain't true. Especially Whole Foods. There are so many hoops to jump through to get into Whole Foods that it's not likely you'll ever see a product that's claiming to be organic that isn't. Coconut as much? Um, I, I think coconut is an awesome food. I've phased it out of my diet for the most part because uh, I know this might be good news for some of you, but it, it makes you uh, a little too, it makes me too thin. Um, it's high in lauric acid, which is a bit of a it's a bit of a metabolism stimulator. And so the Udo's oil, right? The coconut. I think they put that in. Yeah. I found the same thing. I lost. Uh -huh. I became very skinny. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, coconut, right. even though it's a cholesterol-free food, it still requires a fair degree of moderation because remember, all saturated fats, even plant fats, can raise your cholesterol. So. Thank you. Yes. Cool. Yes, yeah. That's great. Uh, you know, it's been here three cents, but I've never had this full.